<laughs> now, uh, we've been very excited about this bit of the show. We are about to meet one of the best magicians in the country. If you haven't heard of Richard Bellows before, my bet is, by the end of the year, he'll be a household name. Mm. Now, this Friday, Richard's up against seven other magicians competing for the chance to work alongside world-famous illusionist Penn and Teller in Las Vegas. Is he any good? Take a look at this. My name's Richard Bellas. For the last month, I've been staying here at Tower Bridge in a tent at the back for the heat, the cold, making sure he gets through this, OK? Wasn't this one, was it? <laughs> what was it? I did a club show. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> Shout to the camera. <laughs> okay, um, just put it back in here, like. Good job, and it goes. Did you see roughly where that went? Yep. Because you're all gonna have a guess at which one it is. So as I run through the cards, touch a card you think might be his card. Stuff. Richard Bellas is with us in the studio here. Richard, pleasure to have you. So, how do you go about defying the laws of physics on a daily basis? <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, it, um, it's kind of a science and art. It, we, we try and take something very scientific in the method and then perform it like an art. So, it's behind the scenes, it's very technical. And then when we get let loose on the public, we try and make it as uh, entertaining as possible. And what's the biggest kick that you get out of it? Is it the reaction that you get from the public? Yeah, massively. Uh, anyone who says it isn't is lying. Um, when someone says, ah, oh, it's amazing, I'll go, thanks very much. You know, because <laughs> that's some of your hard work. You put in work and you want to get that sort of reaction out. So that's yeah. definitely the kick. Uh, and being it, sorry, go ahead. No, well, what and I was going to say is, because it's all about the fact that you can be very, very close mm. up. You know, some illusionists like to have a big stage to work on, but you can actually do stuff really close. Mm. And we. <laughs> He's, he's great, isn't he? He is. He's going to show us a trick. Go <laughs> now, on. Go on. Do, yeah, do sure. one now. Card trick. OK, sure. Uh, I want to get you to take two cards each rather than one. OK, oh, okay right. Um, so any way you like. I won't make you pick Me one. Me first? OK. Yeah, no, Jake. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> right, so two, what, two together? Yeah, any way you like. Yeah, right. separate. Okay, there we are. Uh, and uh, same okay. for you. Dig around. You haven't got to take one in the middle uh, if you don't want it. <laughs> it's hard not to take, take it, though, isn't it? that one. OK, have a good look at those cards for me. OK. OK, can you see those? I can't quite, but I'm trying to catch it. <laughs> no, so it's okay, what I want you to do is have a good look at them and remember one of them. And just, just one of them. And just forget one. The other one. Right, okay. Okay, so uh, just say stop. Yeah, stop. We'll put yours back in there. Oops, excuse me. Both of them back say in. again. Say stop again. Stop. Yeah, put them both back in. Just chuck them in. I don't know which one's your. Neither do you. <laughs> you got it? You know okay. which one you're yep. yes? Yeah, yeah. Um, one of them yours? No, that's. Would have been lucky. Would have been lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, say stop as well, please, Polly. Okay, stop. Uh, right here. And place it back in for me. Okay. Oh, that, that's way to stop. Yeah, these go on top. There's not many. Good job. Now, the hard part about this is not just finding the cards, it's finding the right one. Yes. And we use a move called the mumble flip-flop. The mumble flip-flop. It's flip -flop. a very, very bizarre mumble. move. Okay. I'll show you the mumble flip-flop. And this is for you first. Um, this is a mumble flip-flop. <laughs> so quick. <laughs> Which card did you remember, please? Which card did I re you want me to tell you? Yes, please. It was the King of, of hearts. hearts. You see, it jumps right out of the deck. Oh, Your look, card. there it is. It jumped out. <laughs> well, that's because I've got no friends. I can do this, right? But hold out your hand for me. OK. And leave that there just for a second. The King of Hearts yours. It's harder to find. OK. Because I've lost the card. So here we go. Uh, one more cut, and I think I've got it. On top of the deck. Yep, I found it. Which card was yours? Eight of diamonds. Eight of diamonds. That's the cool part. Wow. But now this is the interesting part. Take the eight for me and just put it in the middle, any way you like. Anywhere, anywhere. Anywhere any way you like, yeah. Okay. Do you remember which card it is you forgot? The two of, of clubs. clubs. Oh, and which card did you forget? My word. It was the Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That is That's brilliant. That's so clever. Good stuff. How does he do that? <laughs> I do it very well, so I do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And how did you how did you get into it? How did you uh, become my my dad used to teach me stuff when I was little and um it's just been something I've done ever since. Um, I, I, when I was a kid, I started doing magic with stuff that wasn't cards because I used to spend all my money on sweets. Um, <laughs> I am yeah, one of those sort of people. So I used to do things with rubber bands and coins and things like that when I started out. And then as I got older, I sort of got into the cards and the mind reading. And well, stuff. I mean, it's clearly going fantastically yeah, well. Yeah, it's good fun. And uh, Friday night is when you find out yes. whether or not you actually get to be performing alongside Penn & Teller in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's massive. Yeah. 
Big uh, deal. Yeah, you open the show for them, so it's uh, a week in Vegas at the Rio Hotel, open in Penn & Teller's show, which uh, it doesn't get much bigger. No. Best of luck with it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good luck. Cheers. Fingers crossed. Thanks very much for coming in. No problem. Now, at, uh, on... At the age of 26, Michael Hutchinson was eating himself to death, uh, weighing in at over 30 stone. But the thought of leaving his children fatherless and his wife a widow was the motivation that he needed to change his life. Now, the nurse from Sitting Vaughan is half the man he was, losing a whopping 12 stone in just one year. Weight loss that's